thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I want now to go on with a short presentation about our project Dynamic Light, so that you know for the ones who are not project partners uh, where we are talking about what we did uh, in the recent nearly three years. And uh, I'm very happy that we were pointing out these uh, problems between uh, to find a compromise, to find uh, an idea what could be the ideal solution, or not the ideal solution, but an optimized solution for the public lighting. And uh, we think with our project we will have a contribution to that. So what we think is that we have to have a city which is livable also during the dark hours. It is, should be healthy and it should be also economically attractive. These are, in the beginning, seems to be also somehow contradictory, but uh, we will see that uh, there is also a relation between all these factors. So for the ones who don't know uh, about the project, it is a project with uh, a huge project and we have uh, 17 partners and the main point you will see later of this project is to have nine pilot projects, nine areas where we are testing in different ways dynamic lighting. Um, you can see that there are partners from all over Central Europe. So we are lucky that uh, the United, uh, that's, uh, EU is, uh, the European Union is uh, look, thinking that uh, Visma could be Central Europe. So all the ones who were traveling here have another opinion about that. Uh, it is far away in the Baltic Sea, but we have also, uh, at the Baltic Sea, we have also partners from Italy, from Croatia, from Poland, from Austria, from Slovenia, and from Czech Republic. First, a short de definition what we think dynamic light is. So, you know and we all know that uh, we have already technologies to make the interior light appropriate to the, um, to the needs and uh, there are a lot of possibilities to change it. If we have the public light, there is normally only the situation that we can switch a public light on and off. Now it starts thanks to the industry, that uh, there is also the possibility maybe to dim it a little bit, but it is a position between on and off. And uh, we learned already in the speech before from Mr. Henkel that the problem of public lighting is that there is not only one switch, that there is uh, and, and there is not only one responsible person, one deciding person, who is deciding now to switch on or switch off the light. So the things in the public are a little bit more complicated than in the interior. So that uh, we can think about um, that we can think about to f first to think about to, to understand what dynamic light is. So if we have this car, then we can see there are dimmed headlights, there is a ground light, there is a spot, there is a high beam, there are side lights. So there is a differentiated way to lit up uh, the, the area in front of the, sky, uh, the car. And uh, if the driver is thinking it would be nice to have this or that situation, he can change the light and he can adapt the light to the situation which is, um, or which is needed for the situation the driver recognizes. If it is possible to provide the light which is needed um, in a way that if the car is coming in that situation that 
there is a curve or there is some um, car coming from the opposite direction, then the light could be changed automatically and the situation, the lighting could be provided in a way that it is uh, proactive, that it is already there if we need it. And if we have a, a light situation where the light is already there when it is needed, then uh, we could talk about uh, dynamic light, light which is um, changing in a way that it is according to the, to the needs. And if we are talking about public lighting, we have already seen this also. We are not only talking about street lighting, we are also talking about a lot of different situations of lighting. So, the light could also be different in different situations and have also different functions, maybe also social functions, not only the security where we are talking in the speech before about. Let's say here we have an inviting situation in this uh, um, situation in Emmen, and uh, it could be reduced the light because the church is closed, the courtyard in front of the church is not lit anymore, but the orientation that there is this important building is still there. And uh, maybe during the night the light could be reduced so much that there are only some parts to orient uh, uh, to give some, let's say, orientation and the feeling of security for people who are walking around during the night. One of our findings is that dynamic lighting could be sustainable and sufficient. Because it is social, it is respecting social aspects, it is respecting ecological aspects and it is respecting economical aspects. This is the definition of sustainability and what is the definition, a definition of uh, suffi sufficient? Sufficient means that the light shouldn't be more than it is required. And uh, um, there is a good example from the heating, uh, the energy consumption of the heating in Germany. We are doing a lot in the last decade to reduce the energy consumption for the heating in Germany and we are very successful with that by buying new, new um, um, tools for that and so on and making a better insulation and so on. But if we are looking what is the energy consumption per person for heating, then there is no decrease. And this is because we are using more and more space for living. And this is a question where we should think about what is sufficient. If we have a limited energy consumption for heating, then it would mean if we have a bigger space, we have a lower temperature or we are heating only a, small, uh, a smaller part of this space. And this could be also uh, the possibility of thinking for lighting that we say, okay, we are using in certain times of the night the light more extensive to have, for example, this risk-free use, but in other times of the night it must be, it might be possible to have other technologies, maybe the marking light, helping reducing the energy consumption or to make the light sufficient because there is the risk very, very reduced because of very low traffic. Then, <clears throat> if we are thinking about the social quality, dynamic light can improve the quality and appropriate appropriateness of public lighting. Uh, when the light is according to the changing user needs and social activities during the night. And therefore, we have to look really what happens in the streets 
and we have really to understand wherefore the light is used and we will get also some examples I think during the day to this point. This is a picture illustrating a differentiated light according to the uses. Here everything is switched on but it is also possible to reduce the light according to the uh, uses. And I think one thing we should have if we are thinking about um, to design public spaces, also design public spaces with light. We should create living places by making it the place for multiple uses. Not thinking also during the night to have a monofunctual situation, not thinking only about the traffic as a risk, but also thinking about um, for example, the needs for people who go shopping, who are cyclists, who are uh, trying to gather uh, during the night uh, for leisure purposes or also for working. Dynamic light can reduce the light pollution and can respect other species. And I think this is um, a very um, important thing which maybe could be easily done by thinking exactly where do I need the light and not trying to have okay there could be someone coming along that area and we are lighting up that area too or as I have seen now um, in very very often with the replacement uh, of the old technology to LED you were mentioning you were you have seen then dark spaces because the light was directed very clearly on positions where maybe not enough where it is needed. But I have seen the opposite very often if I'm going around to the, in the villages that now with a lot of brightness are illuminating facades, gardens and so on. And this is not needed. So we have to, to think about that. And then now the dynamic comes also that we should think what happens to any uh, to, to every time to uh, regu uh, to make it in a way that it is um, according to the uses and then we can help maybe by bringing the light in that positions only to see better the sky and we will hear some more about light pollution this afternoon an example here from the region. One thing, I have this warning in the end. Uh, I think for me the feeling is that switching off is very rarely a satisfactory solution for um, making the light appropriate to the situation, even if there is no use of a situation for um, a longer time because um, I think it is also a need to have the trust into the lighting and the idea that the light could be there even if it is dynamic. And <clears throat> the last point is the economic point. Yes, we can reduce the light consumption, uh, the consumption of electrical energy a little bit more, but if we are looking at economical uh, situations, if we are talking about sensors, if we are talking about control systems and so on, I think in the end it won't be cheaper and it won't be possible to save the money we need for new technology by reducing the energy consumption and even the idea of um, um, respecting the climate is a little bit problematic because we have so much additional things to produce. But there is also an other economical aspect which is very attractive. This is that we could use the light in a better way to make a city attractive. And uh, this is an economical benefit and uh, yeah, I have to thank our vice uh, 
uh, mayor this morning where he was mentioning that this is for a city like Wisma important to have attractive surroundings during certain uh, times. The ones who were working around uh, yesterday could see that uh, after nine o'clock, uh, even if there is an event in the city, there are not so many people on the streets. Maybe then the attractiveness of the city by light could be reduced to the light which is needed for a risk-free use of the streets. Some pictures about that. So quality in light can attract visitors to the city and make the neighborhood attractive for living and working. So these are the main points where we are thinking about that uh, uh, the public light is not monofunctional and uh, we could uh, develop it in different points if we are thinking about to make it appropriate to the situation in a way that it is dynamic. Discussing about quality, I think it is not only the function of visibility, there are also a lot of other aspects where it could be interesting to think about, like narratively and symbolism and atmosphere or the intuitism of light, and we saw also some ex examples before that. So, um, what did we do in our project? We had four work packages. One was more or less about design, one was about the city, one was the practice, the pilot's pro projects, and one was about legal aspects to summarize it a little bit in a short way. And then I think the project's partners know it and we are still working very hard on it to get through this huge a uh, part where all the de de deliverables and outcomes are shown and you can see a lot of things, steps we have to do to come to the final result. And in the work package one about the design, we developed a monitoring tool, a demand analysis, manual of social needs, manual of transferable solu technical solutions, and also we will develop or we will document the design strategy. So in the end we will have um, a lot of outcomes from this work package one and these should be helpful for making a dynamic lighting design in a way that we are also thinking about all these different situations and understanding better how to, uh, what happens in the public space to, to make the, dynamic, uh, the light dynamic means pro proactive and adaptive. Different situations which are from the past, from the past project. Um, then we have the city and uh, to implement dynamic light into the city we have to use a lot of data which are normally not used till today for the lighting. Like, uh, okay, the traffic data, we, we are using it, but we are using it not the actual traffic situation. We are using um, data which are calculated um, according to average, uh, average uses of the streets. Then there are uh, maybe different uh, activities like in front of a school. There is a good lighting needed in the morning, but not in the evening. So um, there must be, or there could be also a differentiation in this area about the lighting. And so there are a lot of data available and these data have to be connected with the light and the control of lighting to uh, later on with the control but first with the light to develop um, a master plan to develop an idea how the light should be in different situations of the night every day, every night 
or also uh, seasonable, uh, se yeah, seasonable changings uh, over the year. And uh, if we have this master plan, then we have to think about uh, how could this be realized, where are the uh, biggest problems in the city, and then we have to develop an action plan and a strategy how to implement this in the political process. And for all these aspects, we have also uh, developed examples and uh, um, papers where you can see the way of thinking what could be helpful for using that. Rostock, for example, has a lot of data where they can work with. And uh, we were also, in other cities, we were also um, implementing, trying how it works to make the basic thing to have a GIS-based um, uh, information where the luminaires are, what kind of luminaires uh, they are and what kind of light they are providing, so that we have then also um, a view and we can um, make a monitoring and understanding to develop these plans, like the master plan, where I have talked about. And then <coughs> there is also the idea that all this has to be financed. So for that we were also looking for the financial possibilities to uh, realize this new um, lighting in a city. And therefore, there were a lot of finding about sources on the EU level and how to use them. It's also a um, um, possibility to find it very quickly. Now let's come to the work packet three, the pilot actions. I don't want to go deeper in this because this is um, a topic where we will talk tomorrow a lot about. We made it in different uh, uh, cities like Mantua, like Szczesna, like Karkovic, Glinike Nordbahn, Rostock, Wüssing, Gorenskaya region, uh, Susice and also Lobek Slaski. We were thinking, not doing it in reality, but thinking how this um, pilot action could work. Um, yeah, here you can see that uh, the countries to that. And the idea is that we have uh, a technical implementation, that we see how the light is changing and how the acceptance is changing, what um, are the new possibilities getting from this uh, pilot installation. Then uh, we will extend in these communities also the scope to think about the light, which will give also then the possibility of further development. And this is what we have seen in most of the pilot areas, that this was a nucleus for, yes, we can do it, we can develop our lighting um, if we are thinking not only in exchanging to LED, but also in enhancing quality and, uh, yeah, as I thought, um, enhancing quality and reducing uh, the um, electrical power consumption, for example. Yeah, and uh, so we had um, pilots who were more acting with the social quality, like we had it in Shizina, a situation which was very problematic, and now with the new dynamic light, are developed uh, together with uh, the uh, with the inhabitants there, um, the situation is has improved, and uh, the whole quarter is uh, happy with this new lighting. Uh, <coughs> another example is Susice, where um, an important church, an important monument is uh, lit, and there is also uh, the possibility to um, try and a little bit another thing. There is also the idea of the change of color temperatures and uh, how to uh, involve this in the concept to get a higher quality. 
Coming to the ecological aspects, we have in Mantua a very good um, project where um, in the park there is an area where people like uh, to use it also in the evening for having sports and biking, running and so on. And uh, it was uh, very badly illuminated. We will see later on how it is now. But the idea was to respect the other species to have a light uh, during the night which is also color uh, not only reduced very much but also color changing and we will learn about this later. Then we have bled and uh, uh, um, uh, I can still not pronounce it Jezetsko <laughs> Jezersko, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, these are also uh, regions where the uh, and solutions where the ecological part is dominant. Very nice natural uh, situations. And then coming last but not least to the economical part, there we have uh, in Germany here in Rostock the pedestrian and the cycle part. And uh, <clears throat> here the idea was to have a lighting which is really not uh, uh, very, very much reduced and uh, switched off if it is not needed because it is a cycling way. There was also um, um, accounting uh, how many people are using it during the night and uh, how much light is then needed if there is only this very low using uh, during the, the night time. And another <coughs> example is in Glienicke Nordbahn uh, in the north of Berlin where also the lighting is um, adjusted according to the traffic, according to the um, conflict points and uh, also if the fire police is using that. And the last is the pilot investment in Kakovic, a huge, in, a huge area, a long street around the city center with uh, different situations where first the idea was to change it to LED and then also to have the possibility to dim the light and to re reduce the light according to the needs. And you can see that uh, here the economic economical aspect was really in the beginning. Then there is also Güssing, uh, which uh, I have not mentioned or I have mentioned. But to um, summarize a little bit, I have time. Um, all these uh, pilots uh, had in the beginning an individual analysis of each location and uh, this was important to find out what will be the solution there, the clarification of the use and the contacts, the activities and the expectations uh, were also um, of, the, of the people there were also researched and then we found that uh, very often it was not so maybe needed to have a complicated combination of uh, different parameters. Very often the clock is also giving a lot of uh, information about what will be the use because uh, we are used to make our habits clockwise. So it is not every time needed to have a presence control or other sensors. But sometimes, for example, in Kakovice, they, they used um, a rain sensor. Um, sometimes, uh, it is, if, if it is needed and wanted, there is the, the, the need to have a more complicated uh, system. Yeah. Um, the full potential of dynamic technology is not used in these pilots. Uh, if you are going um, close to that, then it is not that you are seeing 
Oh yes, this is really great if it is raining, if there are uh, clouds in front of the moon, the light is changing, if it is um, um, early in the morning there is another light than in the evening and so on. All these things we are not having in our projects. Our projects are very small steps in the direction of dynamic light and we thought that to do so was implementing a lot of problems, a lot of technical problems, problems to persuade people to do so and uh, so that in the end I think the results are very, very good to, to show the first steps and to start the way of thinking. And therefore I'm very happy and I, I have to say also proud for every project which was done and realized because this has a different aspects to look at this problem and this will also in the sum it will uh, I think enhance the process uh, of using other forms of public lighting than before. And a very important part of that is also to make it possible, to make it happen also from the legal aspects. And there this project was very successful. We were doing a research about the different uh, standards in, in Europe which are not so different because there, is also, uh, there are also standards on the EU level, but there are differences and uh, there is also a development now how to, uh, how to work with this and uh, yeah, thanks to Axel Stockma we are also able uh, to bring these ideas in the further on process of standardization so that in the further on process it is maybe more possible to have a changing uh, public lighting than it is already and uh, thanks to Axel it was also um, um, possible to see the, the, um, the, the, the possibilities, the play we can have with this uh, already with uh, uh, the differentiation in light. And um, then we were also comparing the procurement rules because this is uh, important. Uh, if you want to buy something, you have to do it according to rules in the European Union. And this is not so simple as it looks like. There are long, uh, a lot of things you have to look at. And we are also thinking about the um, EU regulations about energy efficiency. So we were trying to bring this together and have this process of changes which the Croatian um, um, uh, partner were also reporting the process to have an eye on that. Uh, yeah, I don't think I want to go in details because we have also lectures uh, later on about that. But this is uh, then talking about the process and let's come to a summary. The summary is maybe not very astonishing but uh, going through this project uh, for me it was somehow astonishing how complex dynamic light is compared to static lighting. To say it simple, if you as a lighting designer were doing one calculation for a street according to the situation and this was realized, you were happy and the project was done. If you are thinking about dynamic lighting, you have to think about different designs, different um, yeah, designs which are reacting on different situations. So you have to find out what are the different situations then to react on that. 
so that there is not only one design to be, do, uh, to be done, there is also a number of designs to be done. You have to find out which one are relevant in this situation and you have to think about what are the parameters, how to control the system that um, it will provide the light when it is needed. So this is much more um, complex in both of terms of uh, technology and greater con consideration of spatial aspects and user behavior. Then there is a temporal differentiation in the lighting design. I think I mentioned that already. And uh, each project requires its own analysis of the situational requirements. And this is also a finding even we, if we had similar situations, or we thought in the beginning similar situations, looking at the pilots, at the proposed pilot, I was a little bit unhappy in the beginning because I thought, ah, this is similar to that, and maybe it is a replication, and we want to show the whole width. No, every project is so different from the other that I think it will be problematic to say if you want to make a dynamic lighting that you can make uh, a general design for, for a situation which you can multiply all over Europe. Yeah, and uh, not only the, the design has to be done, the parameters have to be evaluated and uh, the all algorithms have to be developed so that the, uh, the system can run in the way how it is meant to do that. So there is a lot of work to do where we are not used to and with as uh, lighting designers. Um, and uh, with our project we tried to, to describe the process and to develop tools which are helping in the design process, helping in the process of realization, and helping um, also um, on, a, on, a, on the design level, but also on the city level, which is very important. And so I think it is a very wide and complex project where we were working on. Thank you, and uh, we hope that dynamic light aims to sufficiency.